and welcome to All My Floss to Neighbors. I'm Chris and this is Chris Cross Stitch and today is Tuesday, May the 31st, 2022 and this is floss tube number 52. I'm so happy to have each and every one of you here today spending some time with me. If you are new to this channel, welcome. Welcome to the neighborhood. I hope that you like the video. This is a channel primarily about cross stitching, but at Chris Cross Stitch, you get more than just cross stitching. Um, sometimes it goes off the rails a little bit, but you definitely get more than just cross stitching and I'm so glad to have you here. I hope that you like uh, the video enough to subscribe and ring the bell and, and, and hit the thumbs up button. And if you are a returning member of the neighborhood, welcome back. It's great to see you again. And I hope that you have had as good of a week as you could have possibly had in your uh, personal lives. Um, that came out very crazy. That, that was odd, but I hope you had a good week. <laughs> that's, that's just a, a roundabout way of saying I hope that you had a good week. Now, let's, let me tell you right now, my hair is just doing a thing of its own today. So, you know, I, I have not been around static electricity. Um, I have stayed away from light sockets, but for some reason, it, you know, just has a mind of its own. So we're going to go with it. We're going to roll with the flow. So let's get started. Each week we begin crisscross stitch by naming Hand Standing Cat. Hand Standing Cat is the top of Tiki, Tree of a Thousand Faces which is a piece of teak driftwood that's right in the corner of my bedroom. The top of it looks like a hand standing cat. And every week, one of my dear neighbors names it. This week, hand standing cat's name comes from our neighbor, Linda M. M. Um, there's a double last name there, Linda M. M. And she has deemed hand standing cat to be named donkey because she says, and many of you also say, that you think the top of Hand Standing Cat looks like the donkey from Shrek. <laughs> donkey. So this week and for the rest of the week, Hand Standing Cat is not a cat. It's a donkey named Donkey. Let's see how many more times I can say donkey. Donkey. I wish I could do a Scottish brogue better. I love the way he says it in the in the movie Shrek, in all of the movie Shreks. Donkey. <laughs> I continue to absolutely be overwhelmed by the support and the generosity that each of you has shown for the Mary Will Sal, um, a Sal that we have going on right now featuring two beautiful charts by the extremely talented Aya Rosen, who is on Instagram. Um, the support for this has just been overwhelming. This benefits, as I'm sure you know, Dolly's Imagination Library, which provides children under the age of five books, one a month each year until they reach the age of five years old, which is what, a, what an amazing, what an amazing organization, foundation, charity. Um, and we are raising money for it through Miss Mary Will's Sal. I am so extremely thrilled to say that as of right now, we have raised $2,818, which means that means books for a year for 113 children. 113 children. Could not be happier with that. It just touches my heart so much. And I, I have been sending the charts out um, as I've been uh, receiving your emails and, your, and your, your notices on my Buy Me a Coffee site. So if you are new to the Mary Will Sal and you don't know what we're talking about, if you would like to stitch these beautiful daffodil charts that you're seeing now, all you need to do is one of two things. You can either follow the link below to my Buy Me A Coffee page and uh, buy me a book. It's not necessarily 
um, a coffee, it's, and you're not buying me a book, you're buying a book for a child. And really what you're doing is you're just contributing to Dolly's Imagination Library. I will take every single penny of that, I will pay all the fees on the site, and make that donation to Dolly's Imagination Library when we conclude the sale. That's one way that you can do it. It's very easy. And as soon as I receive the notification that you have donated, I send you the charts. The second way is that you can go directly to Dolly's Imagination Library's website and make the donation directly to them. If you do that, which is absolutely fine, I'm so happy about that. If you do that, please take a screenshot of your receipt or just the or the or the confirmation email even um, that they send you. Send that to me and I will turn around and send you the chart. Of course, you can put on there that you are doing it in honor of Miss Mary Will or a loved one that you um, feel close to. Uh, or this channel, however you want to do it. But just make sure that you send me an email letting me know because I don't see your email through the Dollies, uh, through the Imagination Library site. I do see your email on the Buy Me a Coffee site. So if you have any questions, please email me at crisscrossstitch at gmail.com. You're seeing that below you right now. And we will keep this going. Um, at least uh, through the rest of June, I'm sure, and possibly even a little bit further into the summer. But I can't tell you how overwhelmed and thrilled and, and, and grateful I am to each of you. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Hello and welcome to all my floss tube neighbors. I am Chris and this is Chris Cross Stitch and today is Tuesday, March, no, and now on to the cross stitching. Okay, disclaimer. I stitched on one thing this week and uh, there were, it was so many more stitches than I thought, but it's good news. I have a page finish and I have a page finish that is also the completion of a whip go goal for May, which means that I did both of them. <laughs> and I'm so happy about that because I have not done that in, I, I think I did it in January and February, and I think March and April, I did not. But it is the amazing Quaker Christmas by Bygone Stitches, which you have seen. Uh, I, 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 of course, I showed it last week as I was approaching this uh, page finish. I will show you where I was last week and I will show you where I am now. This is the completion of half of this chart. This chart is broken into four pages, four rectangular pages. Of course, two across the top and two across the bottom. I have finished the two across the top. And man, even though it looked as if there, there wasn't a lot of area that I had to complete between last week and this week, but there were a tremendous amount of stitches that I had to complete. There are two large motifs that flank the edge of this sucker, and let me tell you, I spent, it was, I couldn't, I spent two nights finishing one and two nights finishing the other. And, and that's, you know, consistent stitching. I stitched, you know, every single day on this piece, at least two hours. And it took me all week long. I kept saying, I'm gonna branch off and do something else. I'm gonna branch off and do something else. But I knew that if I didn't, I wouldn't complete the goal. And I'm happy to, I'm happy to do it. I, 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 I'm glad to have this particular goal behind me. And I'm sorry that I'm only showing you one piece, but you love this piece. You all love this piece. Now, again, I'm not stitching the letters. I don't like the floating letters throughout this Quaker. Um, I, for some reason, they just bother me. <laughs> so I didn't do that. But I am stitching um, I am stitching some of the things as the, the chart calls. For example, you'll see that beautiful, that beautiful um, angel that I stitched in a garnet, a variegated garnet. 
and uh, the little starbursts I'm keeping in the red. Of course, uh, Noel I kept in the red. And then, of course, I'll do Merry Christmas in that red as well. But I just love it. I can talk about it ad nauseum, but I'm so pleased. I felt such a sense of accomplishment when I, when I finished that. And I'm happy to show it today. Quaker Christmas. This is a this is a stitch along that's uh, that was being start that was started by my friend Annie, the proper stitcher, and my friend Artie, the vintage vintage stitcher. That's always so hard for me to say. The vintage stitcher, vintage stitcher, the vintage stitcher, vintage stitcher. It's easier if you say it that way. The Vintage Stitcher. <laughs> Sound like the Queen. Platinum Jubilee. Um, there it is. I'm very happy about that. Speaking of my friend Artie, the Vintage Stitcher, she is doing a fun thing during the month of June, and I'm going to take part as soon as I find which one I'm going to do. But she is doing a pin cushion challenge. It, basically... It's all things pincushion. And I encourage you to check out her channel where she will explain it in greater detail and with much more finesse and uh, clarity than I am able to discuss it. But I will tell you that it has to do with all things pincushion, whether that is finding pincushions, learning about pincushions, making pincushions, stitching pincushions, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking for, as we speak, I'm looking for a pincushion chart, uh, uh, possibly a bisconnu, <laughs> which honestly I thought was French for biscuit. Um, but it's not. Bisconnu, um, those are pincushions, right? I'm not just making an absolute fool of myself, am I? Bisconnu, <laughs> it just tickles me. It's such a funny word. Anyway, I'm looking for one. I'm gonna stitch one and I'm gonna join that challenge. There is a hashtag associated with it that I'm putting below me right now, but please do go watch Artie, the vintage stitcher and, um, and find out more information about her, her focus on all things pincushion during the month of June. Speaking of my friend Artie, the vintage, the vintage stitcher. Speaking of my, I'm shaking the camera. It's time for Chris's toy chest. After many weeks of not, of not delving into the toy chest, we are going there once more. And this toy chest segment was inspired by one of our dear neighbors in the Netherlands. Our neighbor Joyce V from the Netherlands, she sent me a few um, weeks ago, she sent me this photograph of something that uh, she was reminded of in her childhood. Um, she recently received a vaccination and she thought of this as she was as she was uh, as she was in the post um, jab uh, mindset, and when she was a little girl, her mother used to reward her for good behavior at the doctor after receiving a shot or receiving a vaccination, etc., with a trip to the record store, and uh, she would always get to pick out a record. And this one, this particular one, of course, is in uh, Dutch, <laughs> so I had to have her translate it. But it, it's a record, a Grimm's fairy tale, the, the Fisherman and His Wife, and it features on the cover a uh, building from a fairy tale associated theme park or fairy tale themed theme park in the Netherlands, which is called Efteling. Efteling, I hope I'm saying that right. But it's the largest theme park in the Netherlands and it's all, um, um, it's been around forever and it's all related to fairy tales, Grimm's fairy tales, mythology, storybook, things like that. Um, and it looks just like a wonderful, fantastic, fan, 
fantastic place to visit and I, I actually would love to go there one day. So, um, but she sent me this record, which spurred me to think about my very first record player that I received in the mid 70s. And it's this one right here. It was a Sears denim record player. This is the exact thing that I had. <laughs> Found it online. And along with it came the wonderful, which I'm sure you're familiar with, the wonderful read-along storybooks. Um, this was a phenomenon. Um, it may still, I mean, we don't really, there's been a resurgence in vinyl and, 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 and actual records lately, but I doubt that children have these anymore. It's a shame because these are books that you would put the little 45 or 33, some of them were 33. They were small, but you still played it at 33 speed. And you would read along as it was narrated to you, and then there would be a chime or a tone or something to indicate when you were to turn the page. I couldn't remember all of the ones that I had. I know I had several, but I remember, as I was looking through Google, I would definitely remember this one because my world became Star Wars in 1977. 76, 77. It just, it, it, I was just moving from, you know, little, little boy stuff into Star Wars and superheroes and, and, you know, the more older child play focused, um, imagination, uh, uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was moving out of the Mickey Mouse and more into the you know Superman and Wonder Woman, and I also had I remember I had this one, Wonder Woman, um, uh, the Secret of the Magic Tiara. I don't remember what the secret was. Um, <laughs> maybe it's how she kept her hair looking good, uh, because also I was I was enraptured with the Linda Carter Wonder Woman. Um, that was on television at that time, along with the Bionic Man and the, uh, the Bionic Woman, the Six Million Dollar Man. So I definitely had these two, and I know that I had more. I'm sure I had a few Disney ones, and I wouldn't be surprised. I, I don't remember actually having a Snoopy. You would think that I would have had a Snoopy one of these, but I don't remember it at all. But it was a very short window of time for me because I rapidly progressed from these storybooks into this. Now, I don't know why my mother decided to get me a, an album <laughs> um, with all these uh, artists on it when I was, you know, nine and not listening, you know, not necessarily listen or eight and not necessarily listening to the radio but I loved it, and it was for a good cause. This was a UNICEF, UNICEF benefit concert album, and all the proceeds from the record went to UNICEF. But it was very formative in my, um, in my middle years and my adolescence because it was, you know, full of amazing artists, the Bee Gees, Olivia Newton-John, ABBA, I listened to that Chikatita so many times, I think I almost wore the record out. Um, over and over and over, Chikatita, you and I know. I mean, let me tell you, <laughs> I wore that record out, out. Um, because back then we listened to things on eight tracks. You remember eight tracks? You remember eight tracks? Yeah. Actually, actually, oh, Tangent, not really, but kind of. There was an eight track cassette of the Star Wars soundtrack and not just the music. Nowadays, when you hear the soundtrack, you think, oh, well, it was just John Williams music. No, no, no. This was an eight track that was literally the soundtrack from the film. So you, you popped it in and it started with the Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, and it went all the way through 
the music of the end credits, all the dialogue, all the sound effects, everything. I listened to that thing over and over and over. Mother would let me go out to the car and just sit in the car and listen to it because the eight track player was in the car between the dashboard and the floorboard. <laughs> anyway, so that is a long meandering Chris's toy chest that's not really about a toy, but kind of. And it was all inspired by our dear neighbor, uh, Joyce V from the Netherlands with that record. So thank you for that. Um, I'm sure many of you had those or had children who had those. I don't think they're around now. I don't think, is there anything like that now? You know, probably not because everything is through our, through our, our phones. But uh, I hope you enjoyed that little walk down memory lane with me and, uh, and tell me about the records you had, if you, if you had those. Um, and maybe remind me of some that I may have had and I just can't remember. But thank you so much for that, uh, 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 Joyce. I appreciate it. And um, go listen to a record if you still have one. Not you, Joyce, but anybody. <laughs> Speaking of my friend Artie, the vintage stitcher, the vintage stitcher. <laughs> I have some giveaway winners to announce. Last week, we offered up four different uh, um, prizes or um, items to share uh, in the neighborhood. The first was this wonderful chart it says the word love. The key word was for January. I did that intentionally. This is part of a series, but I only have this particular one. This was a de-stashed item donated by one of our dear neighbors. The winner of this particular chart is Brenda Bloomfield. Brenda, congratulations. Next, we have this beautiful chart by Heartstring Samplery. I wish you lived next door with this fantastic bird on it. This was a very popular one. We had a lot of people who, who threw their hat in the ring for this one. And the winner of this, Stitch and Hammer. Stitch and Hammer. I know that's not your real name, <laughs> but congratulations. You have won Heartstring Samplery's I Wish You Lived Next Door. Next, we offered up this beautiful, um, uh, initial with border design, for lack of a better word. Um, just beautiful, beautiful. The key word for this particular one was romance. Symphonic romance being the name of the chart. And the winner of this, Tracy Garvin. Congratulations, Tracy. And finally, we have this beautiful, small, patriotic Quaker. Patriotic Quaker, another very popular one. The winner of this, Kathy Deal. Kathy, a longtime neighbor and viewer, congratulations, you have won the Patriotic Quaker. If all of you would please send me an email, I think I have some of your uh, mailing addresses. I think I have Brenda's, I might have Kathy's, but go ahead and send me an email with your mailing address and I will get those out very, very quickly to you. And this week I have three wonderful giveaways. The first is a little bundle and I'm calling it the bird bundle. The keyword for this is going to be bird, but this bundle consists of two heart in hand small charts. This is the Halloween bird the and the quilting bird. And these originally came with small buttons they do not have the buttons with them. Just know that you're getting the chart, but no buttons. But there's a third component and uh, to support Artie's all things pincushion, um, this so happy chart that features a tomato pincushion and a bird. And this is um, by all through the night design, folk art designs called So Happy. But again, this bundle, you're getting this, the, the, the 
pincushion with the bird and the Halloween bird and the quilting bird and the key word for that is bird. And how many times can I see, say bird within the span of a minute? Bird, 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 bird. Next we have, um, since it is the beginning of summer, we have the uh, something that's looks it's adorable and it's just it's reads summary to me frost frosted pumpkin stitcheries treasure trove trio adorable crabs and an octopus and what looks to be a mermaid yeah it is a mermaid but this is fun to stitch during the summertime the key word for this is going to be treasure treasure and finally this is a this is a good one. Finally, a beautiful heaven and earth design. A hade. Um, this is a this is a hefty chart. There are um, eighty eight colors in this. It will be large uh, on twenty five count fabric. This is twenty eight by twenty one. Twenty eight inches by twenty one inches. So almost you know two feet square. Um, beautiful artwork by Ruane Manning. Riverwalk charm river walk charm and i just think that's lovely keyword for this is going to be river walk one word river walk so use those keywords in your comment if you would like to be considered for any of those three the bundle the or the two uh, other charts uh, please be 18 years of age or older so that I can ask you for your address. Please be a subscriber to my channel, like the video, and don't use any keywords that might um, draw um, freebie trolls to our neighborhood. So that's today's video. It was a little bit of a shorter video today. I just wanted to, ch I knew, I, I, I considered waiting a week but i thought no i want to say hello to everyone and i want to check in with everyone let the winners know about the giveaways and and just just say hello just touch base and say hi how you doing it's good to see you it's good to hear from you and to thank you once again for the overwhelming support that you have um, shown for the mary will sal and most importantly uh, dolly's imagination library next week spooky summer stitching Pin cushion reveals probably. I'm going to show you what I've been doing on that. Um, I may start out by doing spooky summer stitching on my modern folk embroidery Spirits of the Dead because one of my two numbers is to finish that next month. Yes, not a page finish, a finish. <laughs> so we'll be you'll be seeing that very soon. But in the meantime, I hope that you have a wonderful week ahead. I hope that you get a lot of stitching in. I hope that in moments of, of depression or frustration, you remember to criss it up and to try to find that one spark of joy that can be found if you look for it, hopefully. And I hope you remember to do that. I'll be thinking about that too, because goodness knows I have to criss it up myself. But until next time, have a great week. Take care. And bye-bye.